Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. We continue our coverage from the Greater Niagara Fishing and Outdoor Expo. And with us now, our guest, George Freeman. And George is a charter captain out of Ludington, Michigan. George, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, you're welcome, Chris. Tell us a little bit about Ludington, Michigan. It's becoming, and maybe it's been for a long time, but really probably one of the most popular ports in Michigan. It is. We have uh, good a lot of uh, good marinas there to support the boats. And uh, we've had historically some of the best salmon, king salmon fishing on, on Lake Michigan. Uh, one thing that makes it such a uh, desirable spot to fish is we have some structure where southern lake michigan they don't have much structure at all and when you come up to ludington we've got an area um that it's a drop off people call it the shelf and it goes from like 75 80 feet down to 150 180 pretty quickly and um, we also have the pier marquette river uh, which is a uh, gravel river, and there's never been any uh, big salmon plants in the Pier Marquette River, but it's really good natural reproduction. So we get salmon from there too. So you've got naturally re reproducing salmon, you've got the structure. How far are they going out to get to where that drop off is, George? Well, I'll kind of go around that question a little bit. Sure. In the Pier Marquette River, dumps in, you know, we have a, it's a drowned river mouth that goes into Pier Marquette Lake. And then it comes into the harbor and it uh, heads kind of west, flows west. And so it's like a river delta out there. So it's pretty flat, gets about 60, 70 feet, mostly 60 feet out, probably close to a mile or so. And then it, uh, it's like a kind of like this, it drops on both sides. So if you go straight out of Ludington to hit 100 feet, you've got to go out probably a little over a mile. But if you go southwest or northwest, you're going to hit 100 feet a lot closer. And uh, we follow that shelf down. And Big Point Sabo is uh, that's the narrowest part in Lake Michigan. So there's a lot of currents there that reflect off both sides of the point. But uh, that's like 60 miles across. That's the narrowest point in Lake Michigan. And that's uh, about eight miles from Ludington. And, and, what, mouth. and when do those fish start relating to that, all that current and everything? Well, pretty much all year. But uh, the, the way it kind of works is uh, Southern Lake Michigan, they hold down there. They've had a great king fishery the last few years down around St. Joe, uh, Benton Harbor area and what usually happens the fish start out down there the cohos and the kings and then as the water warms they start moving north now the big majority of the cohos have a tendency to run up the Wisconsin side of the lake but the kings come up uh, the east side of the lake which is our side and they work their way up and uh, so first they hit uh, Little Sabo Point or Little Sabo Point which is about 13 to about 15 miles from Ludington and they hang in that area a lot. So we'll start down there in in say early May and then they'll move up and, and Ludington, if you look at it on a map, it's kind of in a, like a big cove with little point to the south and big point to the north. And so those fish kind of hang in there for, you know, well, typically they'll be in there through mid June anyway and then a lot of the kings, then they move further north. Mm -hmm. So when is the best time for, for king fishing in Ludington? You know, I have a lot of my charter customers ask that. And mm -hmm. I always tell them, if I knew I would be like the hotels and motels do on the holidays, I'd raise my rates sure. during that time. I mean, I really wouldn't, but that's what I tell them. It, it's really cyclical. You know, it used to be that you could count on the last two weeks in August and the first week of September was like a guarantee. You were mm -hmm. gonna get those staging fish. Well, the state of Michigan has cut way back on their plants now. And we used to get uh, uh, a good, uh, like at one time we had 500,000 fish. We had net penned up at Ludington State Park. So we would get a great return. And they gradually cut that down and now we don't plant any Chinooks there at all. Now the next port to the north is Manistee. So we get some of those 
fish, you know, hang out there in that later August time frame. Lake Huron and Lake Michigan are almost, they're like, <clears throat> excuse me, one big lake now. The strait, they come through the Straits of Mackinac. Mm -hmm. The DNR plants more salmon, more king salmon in Lake Huron than they do in Lake Michigan. So there's not a lot of food for them in Lake Huron. So they come and they feed in Lake Michigan. And what we think, myself and some of the other captains, that that those fish now, we seem to have our best king fishing like the last week of July and the first two weeks in August. And we think a lot of those fish are Lake Huron fish. And so instead of them staying around and staging and spawning, they go back over, they go up further north and they go back over into Lake Huron. That's our thoughts. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. You, you talked with me a couple days ago and you were talking about the, kind of the difference between Manistee and Ludington. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well. Yeah, Manistee, they have the big Manistee River there and the little Manistee River, and they have a, a egg collecting weir there on the, Manistee, on the little Manistee. And so they, uh, that's where the majority of the kings are planted in northern Michigan, So because they want to get their returns there. Mm -hmm. And Manistee also has a similar, that shelf that runs out from Ludington runs past Manistee also. And they have like that river delta effect too. And uh, so the last few years, they've been having better kingfishing than we have because those fish come back there and they hold there when they're getting ready to stage to go spawn. Now, you know, depending on which way the wind blows, uh, you know, we might, they might be down to Big Point, Sable, that's closer to Ludington, like eight miles from Ludington and is probably 12, 13 miles from Manistee. I'm just kind of guessing. But, and those Manistee boats will come up and fish by there. But lately, you know, like the last couple of weeks in August, the first week of September has been better fishing in Manistee than Ludington. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. You brought it up, the wind. How does the wind affect the fishery? Well, this year, uh, usually the prevailing wind is southwest or kind of, you know, has a lot of west on it. Mm -hmm. And so that warms our water. You know, it blows the warmer water in, and then, like I said, Ludington is kind of in that cove area. So it would back that water up, warmer water, in between Ludington and the point, big point, Savo. And so the fish would be, there would be typically a thermocline there, you know, mm -hmm. down 60, 80, whatever, wherever it was. And the fish would be pretty much concentrated in that. So, uh, you know, we'd have really good fishing, knowing where they were, mm -hmm. you know. And, but uh, the last few years we've been getting, especially last year, a lot of east wind. So the east wind blows that warmer water across on the west side of the lake, so our water stays cold. And I mean, not ice cold, but uh, you know, on the colder side. Mm -hmm. And so those fish can be pretty comfortable from 10 feet all the way down to the bottom. So they're not really concentrated in one area. So it makes it you know, harder. Well, you know, we, we put a lot of lines out, you know, we mm -hmm. fish lead corn, copper, divers and riggers, so we can cover, you know, a lot of water, but you have to put out a, a lot of, the guys that put out a lot of lines seem to have better success. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your setup and how you set things up when, when you're doing your charters. Well, typically I, I uh, start the morning out. I have five riggers on my boat, but I only run three. And uh, I use one for my Fishhawk Temp Pro. I always have that in the water. I used to put it on my deepest rigger all the time, but then it was always down in the cold water. And I mean, I could see on my graph at where the thermocline is, but uh, you know, my Fishhawk would be down in 42 degree water, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I put it on a, uh, a corner rigger that I don't fish off from, and then I could move it up and down and you know see where the temperature is. But so I'll start out. My typical spread now it would be in uh, August when I'm king fishing. I'd have like a big uh, 11 inch paddle, Dreamweaver paddle on my shoot rigger, which is the center rigger, and usually have a pickle sunshine action fly off that. And then on my two out downs, I would have usually spoons. Uh, it, you know, it used to be we'd run a lot of mag spoons in the fall and early spring, but uh, lately I've been running like the regular size, have some dream weaver, say green skinny jeans, blue skinny jeans, spoons, they're regular size GWs. And then I would uh, 
uh, depending on the water temperature, I might free slide them or I might stack them with rubber bands. I'd have those on my out downs. And then on my low wire divers, I'd have Magnum uh, DW divers on those. And I'd usually have a big 10 inch spin doctor with uh, some kind of a meat rig. A lot of times it'd be a glow type meat rig. The pickled sunshine has been really good the last few years or uh, like a moo moo or a green moo or you know something like that. But usually I'd have a white one on one side, white crush, and then on the other side, maybe a dark green, you know, on the low divers. And then on the high divers, uh, I've been, the last year I was uh, running uh, some flies on my high divers. So I'd have like a eight inch blue bubble, say with the blue bubble fly on one side and have a white crush on the other side on my other high diver with a uh, pickle sunshine. And then starting, you know, depending on the water temperature, first thing in the morning, we just put out one like uh, copper or lead core line because uh, you know we just get one out. Sometimes the boat traffic is heavy mm -hmm. where we're fishing, and uh, you know, and if we're you know if it's a good morning, we have a lot of action going on. We don't really want to mess with the board lines, but we try and get one out in the dark on each side, and typically that'd be our highest one, like a five color lead core. 10 color, 200 copper, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever our highest ones are. And and uh, we troll usually somewhere around that shelf area between 90 and 120 feet of water. I tend to stay on the outside because I don't want to get pinned in by some boat coming and pinning me in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, then after the morning, you know, the morning bite, we put out some more lines out to the side, you know, usually, you know, three, three to four, you know, a good, good spread for us is 15 rods. That's a good spread. Yeah. You know, if it's kind of rough, we get 12 out. Sure. What's kind of the hot color out there? Well, I heard you say a lot of greens in there. Yeah. It, you know, it depends on the day, mm -hmm. uh, but consistently, yeah, I'm using the greens and, uh, you know, the blues and the whites. You know, I mean, if I could only pick one, one rig that I had to fish, it'd probably be a eight inch white, you know, I'd kind of toss up between a white slick, which is a, like a smooth glow mm -hmm. and a white crush, which is a kind of self-explanatory. It's a crushed glow on it with a pickled sunshine action fly. That's, that's really a, a great setup. That's the hot ticket. Yeah. We've been talking a lot of salmon. What about other species out of Ludington? Well, we started out in the spring. Uh, years ago, we had a good brown trout fishery, but the last few years, it hasn't been that great. We had high hopes last year because the DNRs planted quite a few browns the last two years in Ludington. But the way the water was, we had a lot of rain. And so the water from shoreline out to 40 feet was like chocolate milk. We had no visibility. So we didn't, couldn't really catch the browns in there. So we started out fishing like from the edge of that dirty water out to say 60 feet. We were fishing mostly lake trout. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, in the springtime, they're in there feeding on gobies because it's kind of a clay rock, clay and rock in there. And uh, we catch these trout and their noses are all beat up from digging in the rocks after those gobies. And uh, they taste really good too. And uh, we fish for those pretty much through uh, through May and June, you know, as the water warms, we move out a little bit deeper, but then some salmon, <clears throat> excuse me, salmon come in too. And so we're fishing, say, two riggers on the bottom with spin doctors and whirly gigs, say a chrome spin doctor, and then that chrome blue whirly gig with yellow dots and glow wings or the chartreuse whirly gig. We have a called the Lake Trout Candy Spin Doctor too. It's chrome with like Mountain Dew tape on it. We'll run those. And then when when it early, when it's strictly Lake Trout, we'll, we'll run two divers on each side, a high and a low with Lake Trout stuff digging the bottom. But when there's some salmon around, we'll keep our low divers down on the bottom and we'll take our high divers and fish those up a little bit higher and uh, fish for salmon. And that's the beauty of fishing with spin doctors for lake trout because 
you know, typically guys would use Dodgers and cowbells. That's what I used to use. Mm -hmm. And you had to troll those real slow. But with the spin doctors, you two, one, two, 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 three, they're still catching trout and you can still catch your salmon or steelhead or whatever. You're talking spin doctors, you're wearing Dreamweaver stuff. Tell me about your, your relationship with Dreamweaver. Well, it started out, uh, there's another local spoon company and they, they make still really good spoons, but the owner passed away at Yek Lure Company and they make good spoons too, but I was mostly affiliated with them. And I became friends with uh, Pete Rubianis and the name of his boat was a Dreamweaver. And he's a noted, uh, he was a noted tournament fisherman and kind of like a, a legend, mm -hmm. you know, he is very well known. Pete traveled, fished all the tournaments around the lake. And I uh, became friends with Pete and started, <clears throat> excuse me, first mating for him some and fishing a few tournaments with him. He started fishing there as a company out of New York, uh, this Ranoski lure company. And they had some uh, blanks that they were fishing these pirate spoons. And so Pete was promoting those spoons and I started fishing those as well. Something happened, yeah, they had a little falling out. So uh, the guy that owned the Dreamweaver Lure Company, actually it was called Pentwater Lure Company, then Roger Bogner, he, him and Pete were good friends. And so Roger started making a similar spoon, not an exact copy, but similar, a silver spoon. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, because of my friendship with Pete, I started fishing those spoons and had great success with them. And so, you know, Dreamweaver was mostly a spoon company and then they became involved with the Flashers, with the Spin Doctor, and then bought out a fly company, Action Flies, and then bought out Fuzzy Bear Lures. And so, you know, I just started fishing their products. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I believe in them. So I started working some of the shows with uh, Shane after, after Pete died. Uh, Shane, which is uh, Pete's son, became involved with Dreamweaver then. And so, you know, just we're friends and, and I like their products. All right. Appreciate it, George. Thanks for coming on the show. All right. Thank it's you. Fun to have you and fun to, to listen to, to what you had to say. I mean, a lot of really good information that hopefully will help people get excited about coming to Ludington and hopefully put a more, few, oh. few more fish in the boat. If people want to get a hold of you, how do they find That's you, That's just George? what I was going to say. There's one thing I forgot. On my uh, website, <clears throat> excuse me, freestylecharters.com, I put out a fishing report on there and I put a picture of every charter up and... Uh, talk a little bit about where we fished and what we're catching them on to give people a little bit of a, what do you want to say, a start in their program, sure. some place to start with. So, you know, it contains some pretty good operation, I mean, uh, uh, pretty good information. And there's also a link from Captain Chuck's uh, tackle in Ludington. There's okay. a link to the fishing report on their website too. That's awesome that you're willing to share that information. I, I think it helps too. Just people see that you're on the fish and uh, I think it probably helps you out and oh, we just lost your lights and now they're back. <laughs> but it's great that you're willing to share that information and help people get more excited about fishing, get people out there. So thanks very much for that, George. And thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.